Good morning. Uh, I am Dr. Mark Noar, and we are here in San Diego for the 2016 Digestive Disease Week. Uh, I am the uh, director of the Heartburn and Reflux Center in Baltimore, Maryland, where we specialize in just the treatment of reflux disease and other motility disorders. And uh, today we're going to review the new data that we're presenting here at the meeting with regard to the Streta procedure, which is a uh, minimally invasive procedure that stimulates the lower esophageal sphincter muscle in order to grow and help not only stop reflux but prevent reflux into the future. The new data that is very important is an offshoot of the 10-year data that we published in the year 2014 and what is new and improved is we were able to look at a number of the important subsets with regard to that data. Um, some subsets of patients with reflux uh, are difficult, more difficult to treat and those would be patients who are obese, those would be patients who have had previous surgery for reflux and those would also be patients with a very severe form of reflux known as LPR or laryngeal reflux that affects the throat, um, the voice, it can give you bronchitis, difficulty swallowing, as well as a lot of mucus production. And so when we wanted to look at these subsets, we wanted to be sure that we were effective with the strata procedure across all subsets. And so as an example, if we look at the failed surgical sites, subsets such as Nissen fund duplication, which had been the gold standard up until now, uh, we found that if you do strata on top of patients who had had a prior Nissen fund duplication, and, and typically there's a failure rate out three to five years of about 65 percent and if we take those patients and we look at that subset we are equally effective whether you have had the prior, prior surgery or whether you have not had the prior surgery and the other nice thing is it appears that that you may even respond even better having had the fund application first and then a strata second uh, another compelling group you know as we know we have this problem with obesity in the United States and we also know that reflux is very difficult to treat in that subset of patients. Um, medications work well on the normal patient, even in the obese, but or in the overweight, but when we get into the obese and the morbidly obese, there's not a lot we can do successfully. Uh, Nissen fund duplication, again, has been the mainstay of effort there. Although we do know that for the morbidly obese, even Nissen fund duplication is not effective. So what we looked at is we looked at that subset of patients. So we looked at patients who were normal, who were overweight, and who were obese to morbidly obese. And we took a look at, did we adequately treat all of those groups? And what we found very nicely was, regardless of your BMI, regardless of your body mass index or weight, the Strata procedure works equally effectively across all body mass types. And so that puts us right at the level of Nissen fund duplication again, and it's much less invasive for these patients. And then finally, that very compelling group called LPR, laryngeal pharyngeal reflux. Um, our problem with that group is you have to have an even tighter sphincter because typically that's caused by regurgitated pepsin, aerosolized regurgitated pepsin. And so we compared the refluxing patients who had just esophageal symptoms to those who had LPR or laryngeal symptoms. And what we found was they responded identically to the strata procedure and within the same time frame. So again, we now have three very nice expanded indications where prior those patients could only consider surgery and that would be in patients with various forms of obesity in the LPR patients as well as those who have had prior surgical procedures. So this has added greatly to our ability to treat our patients in a non-invasive and very safe manner.